So for a projection vectors, I would have something like this. I would have a vector A. And then I'm going to put vector B. I'm going to draw vector B a little shorter than vector A because it's, it's just going to work out nice for this explanation if I do that. So there's vector B. And I want to project vector B onto vector A. So I think of it as maybe a light shining down and I'm looking at the shadow of B on A. But this shadow, it comes straight down. So, I, so that I get this right angle. And I end up with this vector that's parallel to A, that's right on top of A, and that's the projection vector. So I was thinking this morning, I'm going to call that vector x. And in my, in my head, that just kind of made sense because for years and years and years, you were like, you had all these problems, this is find x. So I want to find vector x. And I want to find the length of vector x. And as I thought about it, the length is actually going to be the easiest thing to find here. Because I can say this, I have this angle theta that's between vectors a and vector b. And theta is now between vector x and vector b. So it's the angle formed with the two vectors. And I'm thinking back to my trig class, Sokotoa, the cosine of theta. I want the cosine of theta in terms of x and b. And I, I didn't specify what about x, because it's not vector x, but it's what? It's the magnitude of vector x. So I want cosine of theta in terms of the magnitude of vector x and the magnitude of vector b. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta is the magnitude of vector x divided by the magnitude of vector b. Well. From the corollary, we also know that the cosine of theta is what? It's right here. So from our corollary, I would have the cosine of theta is vector A dotted with vector B divided by the magnitude of vector A and divided by the magnitude of vector B. <coughs> so these two expressions both equal the cosine of theta. So I can put them equal to each other. So we get this. This gives us that the magnitude of vector x over the magnitude of vector b is going to equal vector a dotted with vector b over the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. Well, I said times, magnitude of a times the magnitude of b, but this is that magnitude of b in the bottom is division right there. So, and I'm looking at that. And I'm thinking I can multiply both sides by the magnitude of b, and there I have it, the magnitude of vector x. So the magnitude of vector x, when I multiply by the magnitude of, of vector b, these cancel on both sides, and I get the magnitude of vector x is a dotted with b over 
the magnitude of vector A. So that's the length of the projection vector. And they call that the component of B uh, onto A. And I'm, I'm looking for it in the book to put the book right up here and say, uh, yes, here it is. This is the scalar projection of B onto A. So, and there's the formula for it. So that's what we just derived right here. So I will write that here in the notes. The scalar projection, so scalar indicates it's a number. Scalar projection of vector B onto vector A is, in what I've written, the magnitude of vector X. Now we would write this, see they didn't call it x in the book, or vector x, they called it this, it's the component of vector b onto vector a, and they'll write it, vector b normal size, vector a is a subscript, and that equals vector a dotted with vector b, divided by the magnitude of A. Then I still need to get vector X because we have the magnitude of X. Now, now let's find what vector X is. And so, uh, again, I was thinking about this this morning. Okay, now. Vector X is parallel to vector A. And I know the length of vector X. And from a few days ago, we did this. We found a unit vector. So I could find a unit vector that's in the same direction of A. And then just multiply it by what I know the length would be to get whatever vector x is. So, so I would do this, vector x, since it's parallel to vector a, I can find my unit vector, which is vector a divided by the magnitude of vector a, and then multiply that by the scalar projection, which is vector a dotted with vector b, over the magnitude of vector A. Now in the book, well in the book they, they wrote, they wrote the scalar projection first and then the unit vector, same thing. And then they, they went ahead and simplified it a little bit. And sometimes in class if it's a it's easy simplification, I'll say, well we're gonna clean it up. So, so they wrote the um, a dot b first over, they multiplied the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a and got the magnitude of a squared and then t that times vector a. So that's what vector x is and this is the vector projection this is the vector projection of B onto A. And we would write this, I'll just write it here on the side. They'll write it, write it like this in the book. P-R-O-J for projection. The projection of B onto A.